We are gathered today to right a wrong. Throughout our country's history, federal, state, and local governments have partnered with not-for-profit groups, including religious organizations, to provide essential community, educational, and social services to those in need. Governments have long recognized that private not-for-profit not groups can often provide such services at a lower cost to taxpayers and with greater care than can governmental agencies. And in some cases, these religiously affiliated organizations are not only the best, but also the only willing provider to serve the other in our community. These partnerships have also always existed within the safeguards of the U.S. Constitution that protect religious freedom, even when used to a secular end. However, recent lawsuits are using an arcane provision of Florida's Constitution to try and shut the door and disrupt these time-honored and highly beneficial public-private partnerships that benefit Florida citizens. We're here today to open that door once again and to end the discrimination against religious organizations from the rightful and equal place in the public square. The Florida Constitution currently prohibits state and local governments from providing direct or even indirect support for religious organizations. This provision, known as the Blaine Amendment, is significantly more prohibitive than the U.S. Constitution itself. It has been used to discriminate against social service programs in Florida, expressly because organizations or individuals with a religious affiliation provide them. Interpreted literally, this no aid clause shuts out any of a long list of potential partnerships between Florida government and faith-based providers. The list is long and diverse. Food pantries for low-income families, housing assistance programs, foster care agencies, substance abuse treatment and recovery programs, prenatal and pregnancy care, prison ministries, as well as religiously affiliated universities and hospitals. You might note them by names like the Salvation Army, Habitat for Humanity, Metropolitan Ministries, Abraham Ministries, just to name a few. It is also ironic to note that it was religious communities and churches that were responsible for the creation of hospitals and for much of the development of the healthcare system in the country. Yet today, the Florida Constitution would tell them it doesn't want their help because people of faith would deliver. We are here to say yes on Amendment 8 because we want to right this wrong. We're here to protect nonprofit non and religious organizations and individuals from this blatant discrimination. We're here to oppose discrimination simply because some are called by their faith to provide services for the common good of all Floridians, and regardless of the faith of those they serve. Our opponents may say that this amendment is about school vouchers, but the fact that the Florida Supreme Court did not use the blame amendment to strike down vouchers easily deflates that concern. Their characterization is misleading and disingenuous. Amendment 8 addresses a much broader issue, that of allowing religious organizations their rightful place in the public square and protecting their ability to partner with the state of Florida to deliver non-religious social services to Florida citizens. Amendment 8 will ask for Florid uh, Floridian citizens to say yes to having the benefit of having secular programs run by the caring and efficiency that are a hallmark of most religious organizations. One example of the threat posed in not passing Amendment 8 is embodied in a pending court case. Based on the current law, the Council for Secular Humanism has mounted a constitutional challenge to a prison ministry similar to the one represented here today. If successful, it will deny that ministry the ability to deliver much needed services to those who are incarcerated, simply because of the faith basis of the organization. This is discriminatory on its face, and this case underscores the need to protect the time-honored tradition of government not-for-profit partnerships, which can efficiently provide services for the most needy in our community. Thank you, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions.